from people that think they're wise yeah. and know everything. They don't know nothing. I, I heard that there were 72 genders is what I was told. And one of my favorite genders, listen to this one, it was astro gender. And that okay. is where you, you're not a boy or a girl. You identify as being space. <laughs> like oh outer God. space. I had got that. <laughs> Were you nervous? <laughs> In 2024, she turns 90 years old. Well, you've seen a lot of things in your years. What do you expect to happen that might be different, might be troublesome perhaps in 2024? You think Donald Trump is gonna win the election? I don't know, but the world would be in better shape if he did. Yeah. You don't think uh, Joe Biden is a good president? Joe Biden is not a good Influence. <laughs> he's not a good idiot. I don't know how they sold influence because he's not no influential person. My prediction is that things are going to get harder before they get better. Uh, right. Yeah. It, no matter what happens during Until this election. Until after election, it's going to get worse before yeah. it gets better. So who wins? There's going to be things on fire in the it's, streets. And... It's going to be turmoil any way you look at it. Yeah. It really is. Specifically, what do you think that people can do to be more prepared for up the upcoming year and maybe some of the chaos that might ensue after the election. You're pretty prepared where you live because you live in a rural area and you've got the supplies and stuff necessary and people that you love and trust that you can count on. But what would you say to other people that maybe aren't in as good of a situation as you? People need to come to terms and start praying a lot more than what they do. Mm -hmm. Looking at things a lot more positive, it would definitely help but it's going to get worse. The Bible says it will before it gets better. Yeah. It's going to get worse because people have turned against each other. Mm -hmm. It's not just strangers, it's each other. I think if people would just stop and concentrate a little more on what's going on yeah. instead of just looking for politics, that's what people's looking at is politics. A new wave of violent crime that local authorities can't handle. As Chinese criminal organizations and Mexican cartels immediately moved in to be able to set up shop in distribution nationwide.
The Center for Immigration Studies show nearly three in five illegal immigrants households are on taxpayer funded welfare support. They keep up what's going on, it's going to be a food shortage. Yeah, right now I could live the four year without worrying about it, but everybody else can't. Yeah, especially people that live in cities. And you've, you've and lived through to, nobody to take care of them, yeah. Really. And you've lived through a food shortages uh, when you were when you were a kid. Uh, Granny lived through the Great Depression, so she knows what it's like to have shortages and for food to be rationed and. And all and fuel and all the things that go along with it. You know, I can remember rationing, but since I never did go hungry, I didn't even think there was a food shortage or anything, even though you had to use ration stamps to get it. Right, but well, but the difference is that you guys grew a lot of oh, your yeah. own food, most of your own food. Anything except like sugar and salt. And yeah. Baking powder. Baking yeah, but I was reading something the other day. I forget the numbers. I don't remember what it was, but it was something like, uh, you know, a high number. It was like 80, 90 percent of people during the Great Depression had some sort of garden, chickens and things like that. And now it's less than 10 percent of people have something like that. I mean, back back then, you know, well, during until after World War Two. I mean, there was a lot of shortage, but you know, I wasn't old enough then to worry about it, but I knew we had to use it. It wasn't your responsibility. Right. Yeah, yeah. And we never went hungry. We never went cold. And I thought everybody lived like that, but they sure didn't. Yeah. But I thought they did at the time. Yeah. So what, what do you, so do you have any advice? I mean, I know I'm putting you on the spot, but do you have any advice for people that are elderly? A lot of people that watch these videos are, are up in their years and they're past their prime per se. And they are uh, concerned because, you know, they, they have to fend for themselves and they, they're not exactly as able as they used to be. So do you have any advice for them? What can they do now? Should they be, you know, gathering supplies? Should they be, what? What could they do? Get more involved in their church and community? And what do you think? A lot more. But, you know, really and truly, you can't really... Say starting at it, and you're an elderly person, to start saving up supplies and so on, that could just get you in trouble because somebody else would take them. Yeah. When, when it Especially comes if you down can't defend that. yourself, right. And the elderly is vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And most does not have a savings that they could depend on right on. And unless you've got a good family that you can depend on and trust, you know it anymore. You can't even trust putting one in a nursing home because people is mean to them. Yeah. And you're talking, you're talking long-term investment stuff. So like, yeah, I, I agree. People should have families that they, people that, fam, they, loved ones that love them and they can count on those people, but that requires a lifelong investment. Right. That to get and that. so many don't have family, mm -hmm. and you know, they that could be part of the homeless situation. Not right now. Most of it is just because they want to in carelessness. But yeah. there's a lot of people who can't afford, can't even afford to pay rent or a house payment or upkeep on a house if they have one mm -hmm. because of the taxes and the prices of everything. I mean, in the last, say, six months, I have spent more like for insurance and upkeep and, and groceries than I had spent in the last five years. Right. And I mean, it's, it's obvious it's taking a lot more to live on. Yeah. And to keep up insurance and, you know, do things at, at home that you have to do. Yeah, and your taxes aren't getting decreased. <laughs> and the poor people pay the same thing as rich people. Mm -hmm. And you can't keep it up because it keeps dwindling your savings. Mm -hmm. And no, you you can't keep that up. Yeah. So. Yeah. And taxes, everything, everything is taxed over and over and over. 
until you can't get ahead. Mm -hmm. And that that is for the elderly people because there's no way for you to make any increase in it if yeah. you're not able to you're, work. You're stuck, yeah. Yeah, you can't exactly just go out and get a, get a job. And get an increase on you. Yeah, even if you wanted to, at a higher age, such as a 90-year-old woman, probably be difficult to get a job. It'd be, it'd <laughs> yeah. be difficult to get a job, probably difficult to keep it. Yeah, yeah. But uh, even if you were able and willing, the chances right. of getting hired are slim. Yeah. Right. And with all these extra people in here, mm -hmm. you're not apt to get a good deal. So. Yeah. That's great. But, uh, so there's still some good people out there. Yeah. Yeah, but if I think one of the other problems is that the it's the negative stuff that gets that gets the most attention. So if you live your life on social media or you watch the news, you all you see is the negative stuff. Negative. People being bad to one another. And you almost never see the good things that are happening. I said nobody is positive anymore. And yeah. And news has got so is I call it gossip, because they don't just tell the news and let it go. It's gossip. People are not quite as tough as they used to be so like you told me a story of how on Christmas Eve it snowed you know a foot 
or two, whatever it was. Oh, yes. Chris, it snowed a lot, and you had to walk a few miles to town to pick up the kids, my dad and my aunt's birth or Christmas presents. You know. In the snow. <laughs> it never dawned on me. I could have said Santa Claus didn't get here. Yeah, that's right. Snow. You could have just changed the I schedule. Just they I had know. to do it. I just thought I had to do it. Yeah. Did, so. But you walked in the snow, in the freezing cold, all bundled yeah, up. It was very cold. Yeah. You put your rubber boots on, right, and mm-hmm. trudged your way into town. But right. can you imagine a lot of people doing that nowadays? I mean, you don't see people walking at all, warmer. even in good weather. You know, used to be now when we first moved here, people walked all over the time. Well, we did. Mm-hmm. And then after Debbie D got sick, you know, there wasn't much, much way to walk a lot then. Yeah. But uh, now you never see nobody pace of walking. Mm-hmm. And I mean, in a little town like this. Yeah. Uh, do you think people are going to get? Do you think people are going to get tougher because harder times are coming, or do you think people are going to give up? What do you think? They're not going to get tougher. They'll probably get more arrogant because nobody, I mean, the younger generation anyway, they have no idea how to make survival. Mm-hmm. I mean, they just don't know how. Yeah. I, I was just thinking, I was just picturing some of like, some of my family members, you know, some of my nieces and nephews and or, or some younger people that I know, you know, in their early 20s or something. I, I was just trying to picture them walking in the snow, <laughs> in a couple feet of snow in the winter. I can't imagine them doing something you like know, that. I think why people don't walk more, everybody drives. Yeah. And if they start eating horse, no matter, you don't have to be a quarter of a mile, they ride instead mm-hmm. of walking. Do you, think, do you think that people should, uh, it, people do that because it's so easy. And it's right. gas is still cheap, regardless of how expensive you think fuel is right now. It's still a lot cheaper and a lot easier to drive than it is to walk somewhere. So, what do you uh, do? You think that we should force ourselves to do difficult things, like walk into town sometimes, and to do difficult stuff to get tougher? You know that didn't used to bother me at all. You could do that, but where there's a lot of traffic on the roads now, if you're not out in a country. Back road. It's not as easy. Yeah. It, it's hard to walk. I could walk right now, but I don't on account of the traffic because most places you can't get out of the way. Mm. So. I was always told if it wasn't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> and I said, so far, I don't see the point in it. I said, because yeah. they have you to come back like every three months or every month. And I said, for no reason. Mm-hmm. And I said, if I don't need them, I'm not taking up their time yeah. or wasted mine. But it's not like you're with, 
without aches and pains and stuff oh. like that. You've got plenty of... Oh, aches and pains? Yeah. Pains to go, but that's part of it. Yeah, but that doesn't stop you, right? Well, so far it has. It might slow you down sometimes, but... You know, it. I don't know, it don't slow too much if you're... Really? And I actually, you just push through it. I hardly ever even take a Tylenol. Because you broke, you broke your ankle real bad. Well, now, sometimes it's that... Pins and that screws me. and stuff in your ankle, and that bothers you. But, you know, Haley massaged my foot good the other night with aspirin, and it's not bothered me since. Yeah. And it was hurting so bad that day. It did hurt all the Yeah, but what I'm saying is you still have... I think and, what happens is a lot of people get the aches and the pains and stuff, so they stop moving because it hurts. Right. And But that doesn't help. It makes it worse, it right? It makes it worse in the long run. Yeah. It does. Yeah. And I know they all fuss at me. I'm not supposed to go up and down the stairs. I'm not supposed to go down in the bottom. What do they I'm know? not supposed to go empty scraps. <laughs> but I do it all. Yeah. As soon as they turn their head. As soon as they're not looking. <laughs> Don't you listen to them, Granny. You keep doing you. And so they got me an emergency button, you know. Yeah, yeah. And which it, it probably wouldn't help. Was it called help. Life Alert or something? Life Alert. Yeah. It probably wouldn't help if I was down there in the bottom. It probably wouldn't even work from here because it's not the one that works anywhere. Mm -hmm. But I'll put it on just in case I get caught. <laughs> <laughs> and Haley caught it's me. It's like your hall pass. Haley caught me the other day, and she said, and where is your life alert? I said, right there. I had them all. Yeah. <laughs> she said, then why did you go down there and nobody here? And I said, Haley, I live by myself and I've done it all the time and I'm not an invalid. <laughs> and so I gathered up all of my paper to burn. I told her, I said, I'm going to burn paper. She said, where are you going to? I said, in the bottom. She said, Granny. <laughs> I said, you're going with me, Haley. <laughs> I said, so if my emergency button don't work, I know you'll get it. Yeah. And if you get a bad cold, you just fix you a hot toddy. <laughs> What's a hot toddy? What's your home remedy for your you colds? Do you not know what a hot toddy I, is? Well, I know what it is, but I, I, some of the people may not know what a hot toddy is. What well, is it? A lot of people don't know. What is, what's your remedy for a cold? Well, I fix it. I'd rather have moonshine is from the store, you know. Sure. But now, apple jack brandy is good to put in your, uh, like your cough syrup, honey and ginger. Okay. And I had cinnamon in mine because that's good for you. Oh, yeah. And then I'll make me up a jar of it, and then I put cough drops in it, and you know, that alcohol will take like it. Like dissolves, dissolves it? Like and a menthol a, cough drop? That makes a good cough syrup. Mm, yeah. Interesting. So uh, I put lemon juice. If I make my hot tea, as Rhonda says, I call it tea. It's not tea. And she don't think it's tea. <laughs> But uh, I, I use hot boiling water, and I put my, if I have moonshine, that's what I put in it. And then I put my ginger and my uh, cinnamon, and you know, fresh lemon is better than just lemon juice, or lime juice is good with it. And just put that in, in a cup and let it steep a little while. And drink it, you'd be surprised. You could drink like two cups of that and go to bed and sleep all night. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'll fix you right up. And you don't have to put much alcohol in it. No. But it, that brings, I think, the stimulation that, that gets rid of that. Yeah. So, I mean, when I was growing up, that's all we had to, to doctor with, really. Is that the same recipe your mom used? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then she boiled. Did she call it a hot to, toddy, too? Oh yeah, that's where we learned to call it a hot toddy. <laughs> you put a little sugar or honey in it, not sugar, yeah. to sweeten it. And that's why why we called it our hot toddy. <laughs> but uh, it it works. Yeah.
for a bad cold or anything like that, and it helps with the cough. And then, you know, as I tell Haley, you use stuff like soltus and mustarole and big vapor rub instead of going to the doctor and getting an antibiotic. Yeah. Most of the time that Man, works I, better. I don't go to the doctor unless I'm dying. Like, uh, yeah. I mean, if I break my arm or something, I would go get a cast yeah. on it, but I'd be out of there as fast as possible. Like I did when I broke my leg, I yeah. had to go. You know, until then, I had never been in the hospital at all except when the children was born. Mm. I don't know any, you know, I've been blessed. Yeah. I've not just been lucky. Mm -hmm. I've definitely been blessed. And so why would I, if I worried, it would take that away. Mm. So, no. That's good, Granny. Because, um, you know, you're not going to live forever, no matter who you are. Come on, Granny. No. You can do it. I refuse <laughs> to live another 90 years. <laughs> <laughs> I'm counting on you. <laughs> but, uh, actually... I probably wouldn't change anything, not that I can think of right now. There might be a few things that I might have changed, but it wouldn't have lengthened my life or shortened it. Yeah. And so there's no need to, there's just no need to sit around and pine about things that, and. Well, could you, what, what would you offer, you know, because you only get one shot at the life, right? You've only well, got one. You've got one. You only got one century to live, basically. And at you most. can you can make it much harder, or you can make it much easier. What would you would do? You have any advice for people that that are maybe younger people that are watching the video and say, you know, I want to have a a fruitful, productive life with a family that loves me when I'm ninety years old. I want to be surrounded by loved ones and family and friends. And what would you well, say to I those mean, people? I mean, that's all I ever consider. It's just the family. Well, what, I mean, I yeah. well, so what advice do you have for those people? How, how could you? How can they get to where you are? They need to start off when they're younger and not build so much animosity between each other, especially families mm -hmm. and neighbors. You should be as good to your neighbors as you are your family. Mm -hmm. And you should respect them as much and help them when they need help if you can help. It's not always money-wise, it's just different things. Sometimes just a phone call or, you know. But if people took more time to do that and get off of the phone a while and get off of all of this tick tock and, and stuff that young people you don't. don't you don't tick or talk? I don't tick or talk. <laughs> I, I may do a little bit of tack, but that's about it. <laughs> Yeah, I don't like talking about politics either. And I hate she it, don't, uh, well, politics is foolish. Mm -hmm. And they've run it into the ground, and they need to change the whole source. It's just a bunch of lies. Well, they, they just vilify each other and don't know what they're vilifying for. Mm -hmm. And that just keeps the uproar. It don't help nobody. And they lie and cheat. And that's not helping democracy, and it's not helping the country. 
it keeps everybody in an uproar against each other, mm -hmm. uh, trying to be Democrat or Republican. Mm -hmm. They ought to drop both of them titles and start over new. Yes, Some other start way. fresh. Start fresh from a different angle. Yeah. But uh, it's not going to happen, but you know. Sure. But if they keep it up, we're going to have a civil war. Yeah. And that's not going to be. You think that that's a possibility? Yes. This year? But I hope not that close, but uh, if you do watch, I mean, you watch sincere things and you see what people is doing, and nobody seems to know the truth from a lie anymore. Yeah. And then they don't tell the truth, they tell the lie instead of even if they know the truth. And that's what's wrong with the younger generation. I mean, they didn't learn nothing in school, and especially during COVID, that was on purpose. Everybody knows that one won all the women's sports was a man, and he still is. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And, I mean, it, it's just a mess up. It's so sad. And actually, yeah. a lot of this social media caused a lot of that. Yeah. And they teach them not to tell their parents about it. Right. And, and tell them they're a boy in a girl's body or a girl in a boy's body. Mm -hmm. Well, children get very confused when you tell them stuff like that. Yeah. They're not old enough to even understand. And yet they're wanting to do surgeries down to eight-year-old and would... Well, they're going to ask for further down, but eight, and Joe Biden signed the the law for that. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what's going to happen in twenty twenty four, but I it's no different than any other year. There's right and there's wrong. There's good and there's evil, and it doesn't matter if you're a Republican or Democrat. You you're either you're either on the side of good or you're not. Or on the <laughs> side of bad. Either. Yeah, and even if you. Even if you're on the side of good, you're going to get some things wrong, no matter. Of course, what. yeah. I mean, everyone, the, the people will always make mistakes, and people well, will always do the things Bible wrong, so. and they'll always give into temptations, and the, we, we will always fail, we'll always fall short. But, and, but, but I think that I think it's super important that we're always fighting to be better every single that day. That is the whole point. Mm -hmm. It's it's growing into doing better mm -hmm. is what the Bible says. Yeah. You you start over and grow into being better. But still people sin every day and don't even know it. Yeah. And what the well, problem is care Yeah, and what the problem I think what you're saying is the problem is that we're teaching kids, not we, but as a society, we're teaching sure. kids that the things that are very wrong and very bad are okay, yeah, it's and, it's, okay. and it's encouraged to do it. You should yeah, do right. this. Good for you. You're so brave and so strong. And and, good for, yeah. I mean, and, it's terrible. And they've been so many young children have committed suicide yeah. because of that because they don't know what to do. They're so yeah, and you can't blame kids that are growing up and all messed up well, because children. they yeah because you because that's what chance do they have? If that's what's being taught from a baby, you know. And well, from uh, kindergarten mm -hmm. or uh, daycare. Yeah. That's what you're being taught. That's what you're being spoon-fed since you and, were born. And How Joe could Biden you possibly says a three-year-old, that's when you start, you know, to find it out if they're, they don't even call them really boy or girl anymore, or male or female, but mm -hmm. it's for which one they are. They, they give a name for it. Um, one of it is they, but I don't want the other one is, but you, you're not to say boy or girl. Yeah, or them and they, and, yeah. Our mom and dad, uh, birthing person, birthing person, yeah. <laughs> so stupid. And then they oh, it makes me mad. That men get pregnant. Yeah. And I mean, they're destroying. Just why? Why are you gotta complicate things? Life has been pretty simple for thousands of years. There's, there's men and there's women. Why are we suddenly now that we're so smart and enlightened that that's we just that it. we're <laughs> we're confusing it? Uh, that's <laughs> just it. That's why the Bible says when people. Think they're wise yeah. and know everything. They don't know nothing. I saw. 
I, I was confused the other day as I heard there were 72 genders is what I was told from some medical.net something or other. 72 genders and one of my favorite genders, listen to this one, it was, it was like something called astrogender and that is where you, you're not a boy or a girl, you identify as being space. <laughs> like outer space. I, I, I had got that in the <laughs> And I said, and they act like they're going to live on uh, Mars. Yeah. They, I wish some of them would. And they act like they, <laughs> you'd think that's where some of them come from. Yeah. But uh, then they, they're going one day they'll go back to the moon. I don't think they ever went the first time to tell you the truth. Lies. Lies. I just don't believe it and I can't help it. <laughs> so Hey, you're not the only one. I never seen nothing to prove it. Yeah. I've never seen the flag up there. I've never seen the rover up there. And I've never seen nobody else go back because they're afraid to spread it too wide because somebody will tell it, you know. Because <laughs> people don't keep that they kind of secret secrets, anymore. Yeah. They keep secrets, but not that, mm -hmm. just on their self. <laughs> but uh, I just never did believe that. Mm -hmm. Because that was too near a thing when they was going to outer space to have just automatically went to the moon. Right. And when somebody suggested going to the sun, they said the sun would be too hot. They couldn't land on the sun. Well, they act like they can change the sun and the moon, but the Bible don't say so. He put them there, and he put them for a reason, and he will take care of it. Yep. And that is a whole lot is what's wrong with this world. They're trying to change what God done, and they do it themselves. Mm -hmm. And they're training young people. Well, they've done that now for years. It's not just the last year or two. Like, you can do it all on your own. Well, you couldn't even breathe if God wasn't in charge. Because he's the one who put your breath in. Mm -hmm. So now how would you, how would you manage to do anything on your own? He gives you so much space for so long. But you're supposed to choose where it's right or wrong. And you're supposed to know that he, if it wasn't for him, you couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. And... You know, I think that is what's wrong with the world. They took the Bible out of school and out of any kind of business, and they're not even allowed to, like, read the Ten Commandments. Well, that was a guide, that Ten Commandments. Was and now, now it's offensive. Yeah. They wouldn't have been no sin if there hadn't been a law, but you're not under the law now. You're under grace. Yeah. And... People try to stay under the law. They teach under the law, but try to call it grace, and it don't work that way. Mm -hmm. So you've lived 90 years, Granny. What advice can you offer in closing as we end this video? What advice do you have for people going into the new year? It's New Year's Eve. Happy New Year, everyone that's watching. What advice do you have to offer for people going into the new year to be successful, to be happy, and to not worry so much? They need to cut their phones off and think positive and start off a new year right instead of on a party. Because whatever you start off in new years, you use to finish up the year. That's what you know? they say. That's what they say. I never believed it. But uh, if you don't start off on a positive foot, you're, you're going to go. So, you, so people need to act right. Act right and think right. And get right. If they think right, they act right. Think right. right. <laughs> and they'll get right. And they'll get right. <laughs> so... <laughs>
I'm Jason Salyer with Survival Dispatch. As a Survival Dispatch insider, you'll be able to gain the knowledge, the skills, and equipment necessary to protect your family when it really, really matters. They'll provide crucial information on such things as stockpiling food, medical necessities, communication plans. You will receive specific actionable plans. You can deliver proven techniques to help you get home, shelter in place, or bug out safe.